Hi Trans by Deaf, this is Christine. Our topic this week is rejection. Um, the thing about rejection, it's going to happen. You know, uh, Pamela kind of covered the reasons why it happened. Um, what I'm going to talk about, you know, it's, it's a little more personal and then that's also sort of some general advice here. Um, for me, my, I anticipated complete and total rejection from everybody. I anticipated the loss of my children, um, divorce, a battle for, for anything there. Um, I anticipated, uh, rejection at work, isolation, um, pretty much everyone in my life falling away from me. Um, yeah, I expected it all to fall apart, everything. And, you know, there were people that left. People that gave up on me. Um, the moment that actually hurt me the most, um, it wasn't even a complete rejection. Um, I expected the divorce that was happening. About 10 days later, I was trying to get my name changed and I went to my dad and my mother and asked them to sign a paper saying that I had their support on getting my name changed. I figured that wouldn't be too big of a deal. I wasn't asking them for anything that's hard. It's like a little letter and just say it's okay. Um, because in Illinois, if you do that, you can save the cost of uh, having to advertise it in the paper, the embarrassment of having to advertise uh, your name change in the paper. Um, and also, you don't have to wait six extra weeks. And it's $100 less because you didn't have to advertise it. Well, my father refused. He said... Um, he named me once and he wasn't going to do it again. Um, and the real message that I heard there, you know, what I heard was he didn't support me at all. Because all he needed to do was sign a piece of paper that said it was okay. And he wouldn't. And because it was hitting so close to the time that the divorce was starting, um, it just devastated me in a way that nothing has since. Um, and I almost couldn't take it that day. I, that was a bad day. Um, that's the first day in my life where I actually was wailing. Um, I know what it's like to wail from that day. Never happened before, never happened since, but that day I wailed. And it's really, really hard sometimes. I almost didn't make it through that day. I remember on that day I told my mom that my transition um, wasn't to bring peace between me and the world, but was to bring peace with myself. Um, and that's the truth. I didn't transition to make everybody else happy with me. I transitioned so I could live with myself. Um, and it's been good. But there's that rejection. You know, it's never who you expect that hurts the most. Um, the people that you expect to reject you, that actually reject you, it doesn't hurt because you expected it. It's the ones that you thought they were supporting you and then all of a sudden you realize they think that you're a nutcase. They want nothing to do with you anymore. Um, and that's going to happen. I mean, there's just no, no rhyme or reason to how it works. It's just what we have to face. But what will surprise you, what will make it just 
an amazing experience um, and get you through it? Are those people that accept you even though you didn't think that they ever would? Um, the new friends that you make, you know, you will make new friends to replace any that you lose. Even if you lose your family, you make a new family. You'll meet new people. And your life will get better. I'm given time. If you don't give up. It'll get better. Um, turning around and going back. You know, there's a lot of cautionary tales about trying to detransition after you've decided you need to transition. Um, and for many people, it's just that it ends up being a waste of time. But for other people... You know, there's this hope that, that detransitioning is going to bring your life back to where it was before. You know, after your spouse has already decided they want a divorce or um, your kids have decided they don't love you anymore. Um, detransition isn't going to fix that. Um, it might occasionally, but most of the time, the spouse is still going to want to leave. Your kids, maybe maybe they'll give you the time of the day, but they're always going to um, kind of suspect that you're going to do it again. And it's, it's just not going to be what you hoped. Um, the people that, that really surprised me the most... Um, conservative Baptist homeschooling family um, refuses to judge they they took the Bible literally when Jesus said don't judge um, they never said I think you're doing the right thing but they do call me Christine they use female pronouns um, and they have been like rocks for me. Um, when my um, divorce was getting started and there were some questions about whether or not I could provide for the kids um, if I needed to during daytime hours and stuff when I needed to be at work, um, they stepped up. They watched the kids for me. They didn't ask um, anything. I mean, they fed the kids and they didn't ask for any money, any kind of compensation at all. Um, they're awesome. Uh, and they've they've stepped up three or four times since then to help me out with problems that I've had going on. I mean, most recently, right now, I mean, I'm, I'm working on um, getting a house. Now, I don't have money for a house, but my parents, you know, my dad, who wasn't going to sign the paper for me to change my name, my parents are buying a house. And then they're going to eventually, you know, after I get through the rest of my divorce, turn around and sell that house back to me. And until then, they're going to rent me the house. Um, because I've had some problems renting here um, with uh, a landlord that decided she wanted to sell the house after I'd been in it for a year, and now I'm in, like, a temporary housing because my parents offered to do this. Um, they're buying a house to help me out. That's a huge commitment. Um, a huge statement that they do love me still. Um, and it means a lot to me. I mean, it means a ton to me that I have family that supports me. Um, and it's not just my parents. My aunts have been there. Um, you know, on, on my mother's side, both of my aunts have made an effort to show me that they care. Um, you know, sometimes people surprise you. Those people that you thought were going to leave you thought they'd head for the door and they don't and they never do 
the nicest thing that I think happens from transition, from the rejection, is you kind of filter out those people in your life who really don't love you for who you are. I mean, it's not an unconditional love. It's like, as long as you're this way, then I love you. But if you do this, uh, don't love you anymore. Um, you know, there's there's a saying about that. It's um, those that mind don't matter and those that matter don't mind. Um, and that's a lot of truth. So... Yes, we're going to face rejection, and yes, it's going to hurt like nothing else. But, if you're true to yourself, you prepare yourself, and you can get through that rejection, you'll find some of those that left come back, You'll find that there's those people that surprise you. And you'll find that there's new friends and new family that you make through your friends. And it'll be good. You will surprise yourself. Um, it's scary. It's hard. You know, if you have a spouse 50-50 on whether or not they stay, even if you think that they're... Um, liberal and accepting of LGBT people and everything else 50-50 on whether they stay if they're conservative odds are they're gone um, but even there you don't know um, you know there's one more thing I do need to say though if you are young and you're living under your parents roof or your parents are funding your way to college. Um, transition is a dangerous thing. A very dangerous thing. Be very careful. Because in that case, losing your parents can mean that you're out on the street. A far higher percentage of homeless kids in this country are from LGBT homes. And it's even higher than the LGB for the T's. Be very careful if you're younger and you're depending on your, your parents. Because you never know who those people are that are going to reject you. Some will surprise you bad, and some will surprise you in good ways. And you just have to deal with it. It's very difficult when you're a youth, because if you can transition right away, you can avoid so much pain as far as your, you know, it's what I would call testosterone poisoning for the male to females. Um, you know, you can avoid so much. I mean, you, you don't get the lower voice, you don't get the facial hair, you get much better results with secondary characteristics. It's not easy. It's a hard decision. Um, you know, you'd like to think that your parents are are going to be there. Sometimes they are. And sometimes they aren't. Be careful. Be safe. I love you all. Have a good week. Bye.